Good afternoon to all of you, those who are watching from the Philippines and those who are watching from Belgium, we welcome you this afternoon in our Sunday service from Visit We The Hope. I'm so glad you are with us once again. Praise the Lord. His name is worthy to be praised. When I was listening to the worship just a while ago, there were a few verses that were uh, touching my heart. When uh, Candy was singing, that's our worship leader, and we are so grateful for her, that God anointed her. And a few things that were in the songs was, I am desperate for you. I am lost without you. Draw me close to you. You all I want. You all I need. Father in heaven, we thank you for this afternoon. We thank you for this Sunday. I thank you for all those who are listening and watching. I pray that you will touch their heart and their lives and especially that they also will cry out like in the worship, I am desperate for you. I am lost without you. Draw me close to you. You're all I want. You're all I need. I believe when Candy was singing this, that it was out of the bottom of her heart, the cry of her heart. Thank you for this, Lord Jesus. And I pray that the, what we're going to share today it will change our lives. Amen. As I said, today I want to speak about the Lord is my shepherd. This is Psalm 23. In the Old Testament, almost in the middle of your Bible, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. There are two things in this. Who is the Lord? And secondly, who is my shepherd? I can ask you the question. Who is your Lord? And who is your shepherd? The same for myself. Who is my Lord? Who is my shepherd? I'm going to tell you who is my Lord. Because when I think at the Lord, I have to think at Yahweh. Yahweh, that means I am who I am. And that's why in the New Testament, when you see about the life of Jesus, he always referring, I am. I am that I am. I am the good shepherd. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. So the Lord refers to Jesus. And who is your shepherd then? Yes, if I say, the Lord is my shepherd, I can also say, Jesus is my shepherd. That's the one I'm desperate for. That's the one I am lost without. That's the one I'm asking, draw me close to your heart, Jesus. I want to be with you. I want to know you. Today, we're going to see what will happen if Jesus is your shepherd. We will mention a lot of Bible verses through Psalm 23. What will happen if Jesus is my shepherd? Can you say it with me? Jesus, you are my shepherd. Jesus. You are my Lord. In verse 1 it says there, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not want means you will not lack nothing. God will provide all what you need. He will provide your emotional need. He will provide provision when you lack something. He will also provide health. He provides everything. 
If we read in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, it is written there, And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. In verse 2, it says, He makes me lie down. That means He gives me rest. He wants to give you rest. If Jesus is your shepherd, He will give rest in your life. As we refer to the New Testament, in the Gospel of John, verse 14, chapter 14, verse 17, it says, Jesus say there, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. So he makes me lie down in green pastures. In green pastures mean it is good to be there. God knows that it is good when you are close to him. When you draw near to Him, when you are desperate with, for Him, when you are near with Him. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11 it says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. God has a plan and a goal for you. And He has good thoughts about your life, about my life. Says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. Yes, He has a plan for you, for each one of us. Great plans He has. That's why it's good to be close to your shepherd. Because then He can perform His plans throughout your life. In verse 2 it also said, He leads me beside the still waters. Jesus also calms the storms at the sea. He commanded the waters to be quiet and to be still. Jesus also wants to calm the storms in your life. Whatever you're facing right now, whatever storms comes on your way, whatever difficulty, whatever hardship, Jesus is there to calm the storm, to lead you beside the still waters where you have rest and peace. In verse 3 he said, that if the Lord is your shepherd, he will restore my soul. Depression and guilt has to go in Jesus' name. That is what he promised us, to restore our soul. He will restore, restore our lives when we are near to him. When we recognize him as our shepherd. In Isaiah chapter 61 verse 3 it says. To counsel those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for, for the spirit of of heaviness. He will remove that spirit of heaviness out of your life. Depression has to go. This is a result when Jesus is your shepherd. When you are near to him. When you are one of his sheep. Also in verse 3 it says, he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. It means 
He makes sure you don't stray. He makes sure you don't go on the wrong path. Because the path is narrow that leads to life. And wide is the road that leads to destruction. But Jesus is there to lead you, that you will stay on the small path. Like it says in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 28. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hands. You are safe in the hands of your shepherd. He will keep you and guide you and protect you. The Lord wants to be seen <coughs> through you. The Lord wants to be seen through us. The Lord, the shepherd, he wants the best sheep. He wants the most beautiful sheep. If you are with him, he will take care for you. So you will start to shine. So the world will see that you are a sheep of your shepherd. A sheep of Jesus. In verse 4 it says, Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That means whatever you have to go through. Whatever you have to go through, the Lord is always with you. The shepherd stays always with his sheep. Like it's written in Psalm 17 verse 8. He keep you, he keep me as the apple of his eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. When you are the sheep of Jesus and you are in his flock. And you stay close to the shepherd. You can guarantee you are under the shadow of his wings. Mean you are protected. You are protected from evil. Like it says more in verse 4, I will fear no evil. That means evil cannot touch you. Evil cannot touch me. Like it is written in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 3 that says, But the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. You know, a shepherd takes care for his flock because there are enemies, there are dangers. There are the bear and the lion that wants to attack the sheep, to kill the sheep, to destroy the sheep, and to steal the sheep. But when you're, if the shepherd is there, you have the guarantee evil cannot do anything to you, yes. against you. And at the end of verse 4 it says, Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You need to understand if you are a sheep of Jesus. He will do everything to keep you in the flock to keep you together with the other sheep and he knows when you go astray how to bring you back that's why i like these verses in hebrew ch chapter 11 from verse 7 to 11. i want to read this for you if you endure chastening Chastening. Chastening. God deals with you as with sons or with daughters. Mm -hmm. For what son or what daughter 
is there whom a father does not chasten? Chasten. Chasten. Yeah. But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate, illegitimate. illegitimate and not sons or daughters. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, we had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Mm -hmm. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and life? For they, indeed for a few days, chastened us as seemed best to them. But he for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. That's why God sometimes has to correct us in life. He do that for our best. Because we will become more beautiful. We will be more become shiny. We will be more resembling our shepherd. We will be like Jesus. And then it says in verse 5 also, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You know, the Lord can give you peace and rest in difficult times. The sheep are laying down in green pastures. But there are dangers around them. Like I said, the lion and the bear. Mm -hmm. But the Lord deals with the enemies. Let God fight the battle for you. If you have enemies, and sometimes we all have enemies, no one thing, the Lord will deal with these enemies. When a bear, yeah, or a lion wanted to attack a sheep, the shepherd came in between and he killed even the lion and the bear to protect all of his sheep. In Romans chapter 12 verse 19 it says, Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. We don't have to fight the enemies. The battle is not ours. The battle belongs to the Lord. He will fight for you. He will do what is necessary to scatter your enemies, to give you what is due to you. God is righteous. But don't take revenge yourself. Don't hate anyone. But forgive. The same way as the shepherd has forgiven you. That's also in the Father's prayer. For, forgive those who sin against you. The same way as God has forgiven you everything. If you don't forgive the others... How can God forgive you? Verse 5. We come to a joyful end in that psalm. The shepherd says, You anoint my head with oil. The shepherd will anoint your head with oil. Yes, the shepherd did also this when you have sheep, they do that, they put oil so that the fly will not come into the nose 
Insects will not bother the sheep. It protects the sheep. And that's also God wants to anoint you with oil. The shepherd, Jesus wants to anoint you. Like he said in Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. John said, John the, the Baptist said there, that Jesus, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Verse 5, from the Lord is my shepherd. You anoint my head with oil, my cup flows over. That means when you are close to your shepherd, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you cannot keep it anymore for yourself. Your cup will run over. My cup will run over. Like Jesus said in the Gospel of John chapter 7, verse 38. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. You will not be able to, to stop speaking about your shepherd. You will make your shepherd great. You will praise his name. You will tell about the good shepherd to those who don't have yet the good shepherd. And is it verse 6 where it ended? It says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. As in Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 20 says, I am with you, say Jesus, always, even to the end of age. And the last thing is, if you are a sheep of the Good Shepherd, you are near to Him, though nothing can take you away, can snap you away of, your, of His hands, I told you. And it ends there, the psalm, it says, And I will dwell in the house of my Lord forever. Like it says in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 1 to 3. That's where we're going to end for today. It says there, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me, say Jesus. In my Father's house are many mansions, houses. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And I go and prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also, and where I go, you know, and the way you know. So Jesus will say, you will be with me in the house of my Father forever and ever. This is what I wanted to share from Psalm 23. I want you to start to read the scripture this way. Not only just reading these words, but what does these words say to me? We're just not reading words, but we're reading the living word of God. I thank you for my friend Johan that told me, you know, this is not just the word of God, it is the living word of God. Yes, that word should be alive. It should change. It should transform your life. And before I close this preaching, let us read one more time Psalm 23. 
all together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yet do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of my Lord forever and ever. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's uh, face shine upon you and give you peace and give you rest. I thank you for listening and watching today. And I pray that you will run to your shepherd. That you will run to the one that wants to help you. That you will run to the one that will keep you. To the one that saved you. To the one that delivered you. To the one that healed you. If there is a need, run to your shepherd. Whatever your need is, he will, uh, he will yeah, fill your need. He will do what is necessary to answer your call. Call on his name and he will answer you. Jesus is my shepherd. Amen. Thank you for watching and see you all later. Praise the Lord. Bye bye.